Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the BioXL webinar number 69. So today we have Adam Hospital from the Institute for Research in Biomedicine, Barcelona, and he will tell us about uh, BioBB workflow and BioBB API in an integrated web-based platform and programmatic interface for biomolecular simulation workflow using the BioXL building blocks library. I'm hosting this webinar. I'm Alessandra Villa from PTC that is uh, hosted by the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. And with me there are Otto Anderson and Marina Bochavo from uh, CSS from Finland IT Center for Science. So I want to inform everybody that the webinar is recorded. And during the webinar, you have the possibility to ask questions using the Q&A panel. And this is, uh, you find it uh, at the bottom of your Zoom application, depends on which operating system you have. You can see this symbol, or you can see this symbol. You just click and you type your question. At the end, we will read the question for everybody and Adam will answer to your question. So you can type the question whenever you want. And I usually suggest to type during the webinar, not wait at the end because maybe someone forget and it's always good to have the there. So the reason why we read the question is because not everybody might be able to see the question and the speaker will not answer to the question that is written, we just read it to the speaker. For if you have Anna, some question or curiosity after this webinar, you are welcome to join the forum, the BioXL forum that is located hosted by askbioxl.eu. And they are asked questions to Adam. There is a special category that is supporting the BioBB building blocks. So something about Adam. Adam is currently a postdoc fellow at the Molecular Modeling and Bioinformatic Unit that is hosted by RB, uh, IRB in Barcelona. But in the meantime, is also a software, a research software engineering of the national, of the Spanish National Institute of Bioinformatics. So somehow uh, Adam managed to combine a computer science background with a PhD in molecular modeling and then it will give then it will allow you to get close to the bioinformatic world and then are fascinated by this field in particular of the structural bioinformatics he has been involved in several scientific projects both on rbi but also on the barcelona supercomputing center and is currently leading the workflow team in, in the bioxel Center of Competence, Center of Excellence, sorry. Um, he has developed and coordinated a set of public web server and database, most focused on molecular, micro, molecular structural flexibility. And uh, in MB integra uh, ENB integrated platform is one on example. And now I'm happy to listen what he will tell us. Just give me a moment. Please, Adam. Thanks, Alessandra, for this nice introduction. Let's see if I can share the screen. Okay, see if everything works. The pointer, you can see the pointer. Yes, perfect. So thanks, Alessandra, again. Uh, and uh, welcome all the attendees. Uh, thanks for being here in this new webinar series, BioXL webinar series. Today, I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, um, uh, projects that uh, that we have developed in the ecosystem of the BioXL building blocks uh, library, the BioBB workflows and the BioBB API. The first one is a web server. Uh, the second one is a programmatic interface, all both of them um, interfaces for biomolecular simulation workflows, and both of them working with the BioXL building blocks library. I've divided the, <clears throat> this presentation in four different uh, sections. I will start with an introduction about the 
about the two different projects that I'm going to present today. Uh, I will start with a story about uh, when uh, all of this started. I also will give you a, a very brief overview of the Bioxel Building Blocks Library and then the main objectives of the projects. Then I will go through the two different projects, the programmatic interface and the workflows web server, and we'll finish with a, a bit of conclusions, summary acknowledgements and questions from you. So starting from the beginning, <clears throat> uh, I would like to start with a, a story, which is basically a piece of my life in research. That started in 2008, as you can see here. That's the period that goes from 2000, 2008 to 2012. And at that moment, I started working in this National Institute of Bioinformatics in Spain that, as you can see here, it was built up uh, from many different nodes around Spain. Uh, and basically, we want to coordinate, integrate, as you can see here, uh, bioinformatics resources um, uh, in Spain. And as we were different nodes throughout the Spain, we wanted uh, an architecture, uh, an, an infrastructure, a bioinformatics infrastructure able to coordinate and to interoperate uh, with all the tools that we were developing at that moment. And we decided uh, that we could use web services. Web services at that moment were very uh, popular and were um, basically little pieces of software, very small pieces of software that were running in the service provider. That means that uh, all the different nodes have uh, developed different web services that were running in the different nodes. We published these services in the discovery agencies that you see in this plot, and the user finds these uh, web services through the discovery agency and then interacts with the service provider to run uh, the web service. Uh, that was very nice at that moment because this was fantastic to do these kind of things. Uh, what we uh, developed a set of web services in the different nodes. And if we joined these several little pieces, these several web services, we could build workflows like this one, which is a very complex workflow at that, that moment that you can still find in my experiment. And that is missing uh, um, microarray data as an input, uh, a statistics using R software, uh, database connections, uh, retrieving information from different databases, mixing all of that in one single workflow. And as I was telling you, you can still find this workflow in the My Experiment website. This is a screenshot of an Apache Taverna, which is a, a workflow manager tool, graphical user interface tool that we were using at that moment. That was fantastic for us. The question that we had at that moment, because I'm I always uh, have been involved in molecular dynamic simulation in the structural bioinformatics field, uh, and in particular, dynamics and flexibility of proteins is, could uh, we produce this kind of web services for this kind of uh, uh, methods, which involves very big structures, uh, trajectories, uh, big data that is uh, going up and down the network. Uh, this is just an example of what we wanted to do. So uh, we, at the moment, we were interested in uh, automating the process of preparing uh, a protein solvent system, running the molecular dynamic simulations, and then analyze the resulting trajectory. Uh, so I can answer you the question, and the, question is, the, the, the answer to the question is yes, we uh, were able to do that. That was not easy. We uh, it took us uh, four years to develop all these web services. That, but that is, you can see here, we developed uh, more than 100 different web services at that moment uh, related to molecular dynamic simulations. And this is just an example of a uh, preparation of a, a, a protein from the PDB website to uh, the proteins surrounded by water molecules, uh, counter ions, and so on. So the system prepared to start running a molecular dynamic simulations. And basically, we use the same schema I was showing, showing you before. So this is our group, the service provider, where we run all of these different web services. And the discovery agency was the National Institute of Bioinformatics. The user found all the services through the INB and interact with our uh, tools here. As a curiosity here, we developed all of this using an ontology uh, of the data ontology that, that at that moment was pretty new that was called movie and bio movie as you can see here and if you see the name here his name is mark wilkinson which is basically the guy that revolutionized the data world uh, with the fair data principles uh, 10 years after this 
So the way that we use these web services were uh, using this Taverna uh, workflow manager that I was showing you in the previous slide, but also in a scripting way. At that moment, Perl was famous more than Python. Uh, and this is just an example. We took an object from this bio movie ontology. We built this object with a, a PDB code. We um, downloaded a structure from the PDB database. And this structure is saved in a, a new object that it's a, a PDB object from the bio movie ontology. And here we can retrieve the content of this object. All of these web services and the scripting uh, were called MD movie. And after that, we also developed a graphical user interface on top of all of these services. And this, of course, was to help uh, even more uh, to ease the, the entrance to all of these, the usage of all of these web services. And basically, in the web, uh, in this MD web web server, you could uh, take one uh, PDB file and work with a PDB file uh, launching all of the web services that were available and also pre configured workflows using these web services. Um, this is the publication of the MD Web and MD Movie that was uh, 2012. And uh, as you can see here in this plot, these are the statistic usage statistic of the web server. We have maintained the web server, uh, and these are statistics from 2015 to nowadays. And as you can see, and especially in the last four years, we have had like almost 1,000 different new users per month. What this is telling us is that there's a still a lot of interest in this kind of interfaces, this kind of graphical user interfaces to run molecular dynamic simulations. Okay, if you want to know more about the MD web, we had a, a special webinar uh, number three in BioXL at the beginning of BioXL about uh, uh, atomistic molecular dynamics using MD web. Now, uh, let's jump to the 2016. And I will tell you a bit about the BioXL building blocks. So in 2016, one very important thing happened. That is the, the building of the BioXL Center of Excellence. And I'm sure that you all know about this because you are now in the webinar organized by BioXL. But basically, BioXL is a central hub for biomolecular modeling and simulations. It, it was a Horizon 2020 funded project. Now it's EuroHPC. And uh, these are the partners that are currently involved in the project. We are in the third edition uh, of the of the project. And at the beginning uh, of BioXL, we decided to uh, think about a way to use all of our biomolecular tools that we, we knew at that moment and try to make them interoperable. Uh, this is basically the BioXL building blocks library, these pieces of Lego here that uh, represents functionalities of different tools. We just wrap these functionalities in Python code and then these, uh, these pieces are very easily uh, integrated, uh, um, generating with these workflows, biomolecular simulation workflows. Um, these workflows, of course, then you can launch and uh, manage these workflows with different workflow managers. But the main idea of the BioXL building blocks is that we make our tools interoperable between each other. Those are the categories we, we basically uh, gather together different functionalities of the BioXL building blocks in different categories. So for example, everything related to Gromax is in one module, one category that is called BioVV Gromax. Same happens with Amber, modeling uh, um, uh, tools, chemoinformatics functionalities, virtual screening, uh, protein ligand interactions, pockets, um, quantum mechanics, and uh, so on and so forth. And all of this uh, is available through different packaging systems. So Conda, for example, Docker containers and Singularity containers. So BioVV Gromax is available in one single Conda package, also in a Docker container and also in a Singularity container. That means that all the dependencies that you need to run all the different tools that are inside this BioVV Gromax, all the different BioVV uh, tools uh, is integrated. All the dependencies are already integrated in these packages. For example, we take one of these, which is the virtual screening one. Uh, these are all the different building blocks that are included inside this BioVV virtual screening category or module. Um, and you can have here in the, this is the, a screenshot of the main website of the BioXL building blocks. You can find the GitHub repo with all the source code, uh, read the docs, documentation with all the info that you need to run 
install and run the building blocks. And then you have the Conda package, the Docker container, and the Singularity container. So if you download that or you install that in your machine, you will have all these functionalities together with all the dependencies needed. So Autodoc Bina will be installed by default inside these packages, and also in this case, Fpocket. Same happens with another example, which is a Chromax one. Maybe you are more familiar with this all the different sub tools that are in, integrated in the uh, Gromax MD engine package. Okay, apart from that, and as uh, we are interested in workflows today, uh, we have a set of demonstration or transversal workflows, workflows that we are using uh, in our everyday life, such as, for example, the preparation, as I was showing you with the MD web, of a, a protein uh, for uh, a molecular dynamic simulation. So taking a PDB from the PDB database and building all the system with water molecules and counter ions. So this is a, um, a workflow generated with the biocell building blocks and you can find it in the website. Um, you can find it also packaged in a conda, uh, in this case, in a conda environment. It means that we can use Python and a Jupyter notebook. We just, um, generate the environment with uh, with Conda, and then all the dependencies for the workflow will be already there in your computer to start running uh, the workflow. So take a look if you are interested uh, to the website. There's uh, a lot of information there. We Our workflows are also exported to Common Workflow Language and, and Galaxy, but we don't have time to uh, talk about that today. Uh, last slide about the introduction on BioBB. You have also the publication here and just a, a bit of a, a curiosity about the number of downloads. Uh, again, as in MDWeb, there's also a, a big, big interest in this kind of tools uh, to automate uh, the biomolecular simulation workflows. For example, the preparation of MD analysis or the analysis of MD trajectories. And this is the example of the BioBB analysis package and the number of downloads, more than 20 more than 30,000 downloads actually uh, for this specific uh, um, Bioconda package. Again, if you want more information about the BioExcel building blocks, there's also a, a special webinar series in BioExcel that you can look, uh, you can watch in, in uh, YouTube about the uh, BioBB library. Okay, so the aim of the project is basically to put together these two different things. So the, the BioVB library that I have just introduced to you, uh, using this library to update or even replace the old MD Movie and MD Web um, projects that I was showing you at the beginning of the introduction. That means that we could use new program versions. This is very important because the versions of Gromax and MD, the different MD packages that are MD engines that are integrated in this MD Web are really old nowadays. Uh, to extend the functionalities, for example, as you've seen in the modules, BioVB modules, we have the possibility to use virtual screening, machine learning, and different uh, different new tools. Um, use a REST API programmatic interface instead of uh, the old SOAP web services that we were using at that moment for MD Movie, and also use the new web-based technology that, that exists nowadays that in 12 years, I can tell you that is completely different from what we had uh, in, in the year two. Uh, 2010. And in general, we want to offer easy access to biomolecular simulation processes, the same idea that we had when we built MD Movie and MD Web um, back in 2010. So these are the two different projects that I'm going to show you uh, now. And I will start with the first one, which is the programmatic interface um, to all the different um, building blocks integrated in the BioVB library. So the concept is very easy. Uh, it's in a way, if you want, is exactly the same as we did with the uh, MD Movie project, as you can see here. So uh, these are uh, web services. This is the REST architecture, which is pretty the same. So you can uh, access to a REST API remotely uh, through a computer. You have different ways to access this data. This data is basically in most of, uh, of the of the web services or the REST API are uh, stored in a database and the REST API is retrieving information from the database and giving the information as a result to the user in standard formats like JSON or XML. Um, important is that the processes are still running the provider's infrastructure. Of course, with limitation, if you think about molecular dynamic simulations, we are not giving MD for free, computational resources for free. Um, and also another very important point is that there's no need of any installation in your own 
computer because everything is run in the provider's infrastructure. You just need the connection to the internet. So uh, the REST API is basically a collection of endpoints. And an endpoint is a digital, digital location, like, for example, a URL is the typical one. So this, for example, is a, a, a great example uh, in my point of view about the uh, REST API is the PDB uh, in Europe, REST API. Here is an example of a URL. If you click on this URL, you, know, I, you will have all my slides available uh, after the after the webinar, but I'm sure that you are familiar also with this. If you, if you click on the URL, you can retrieve all the summary information and the important information for this particular PDB code from the PDB database. Um, our idea, is to generate a collection uh, of endpoints like this one that you can see here from all the different building blocks integrated in the Bioxel building blocks library, which are a lot. And for that, uh, we decided to go in an automatic way, automatic process to uh, generate all of this code that is behind these endpoints. But we uh, actually uh, succeed on that. So we had all the we have now all the different building blocks available as uh, REST API. Uh, endpoints. The implementation is a bit complicated, but you can see here a schema of that. that this is the user. This is the uh, base URL for the REST API. The user contacts through this URL to our machines in, in our premises, and these machines are connected to a database. This is exactly the same as a typical REST API, which retrieves information from a database and uh, gives this information back to the user. In this case, it's a bit more complicated because we need to run uh, the, the the tools that are behind these Bioxel building blocks. And for that, we have a, a private cloud infrastructure in our own premises in the MMB group inside the Institute for Research in Biomedicine in Barcelona. All these machines, they have all the Bioxel building blocks installed using Conda environments so that when a user uh, uses or, or calls one of these uh, REST APIs, uh, the functionality the tool is run is executed in this cloud infrastructure and the result is given back is saved to the database and given back to the user. This is the process in time uh, because this is most of, in most of the times in our executions are asynchronous. They are not synchronous because they need time. So if you think about an MD simulation, uh, it needs some time, hours uh, even. So the user um, sends the input and configuration files to the REST API. Uh, the job starts in our virtual machines and a job ID is um, um, returned to the uh, user. So this token ID is then used to poll. That means that the, the job status is checked every time. Uh, and then once uh, the job is finished, the output data is saved in our database and the ID of the outputs is returned to the user. Uh, then with these uh, outputs, the user requests the outputs and the uh, files are retrieved from the database as in a typical REST API, and the user can download the output files. It seems really complicated, but it's not so complicated to use. And now I'm gonna show you how to use these REST API web services. Um, you have um, a web server for this, and here is the URL with all the information that you need. And basically the information, it's very easy, sorry, it's very easy because you have a couple of tabs here, the availability and the tutorials, I will go through them. Uh, in the availability, you have the generic endpoints. Generic, that means that, for example, you can get a list of all available packages. Those are endpoints, right? As I uh, was explaining to you before. Um, you can get a list of all the available tools for a given package. And when I say package here is a module in Bioxel building blocks, for example, by UVB virtual screening, by UVB Gromax, you put here the name and you get a list of all the available tools. Um, if inside the package you put a tool, a particular tool, you can get information for a given tool. And if you do that in post, you can launch the job. And I will give you now examples of how to do that. And these are the retrieval of information from the outputs generated by the uh, this uh, REST API endpoints with the token that is uh, received when you launch the, the building block or the REST API. And then you can also uh, retrieve sample files in case you want to see how are the files that you need to uh, uh, use as an input for the REST APIs. We have 
the tools endpoints, that means all the different endpoints available in the REST API, uh, uh, categorized again in different modules. So for example, chemistry, and these are all the different endpoints for the chemistry tool. All of these can be um, found in the web server. And this is, uh, this is using Swagger with the open API standard. If you are familiar with this, that means that you basically in the website, you can test and try the, uh, these REST APIs. You can also uh, use your own input to try and execute these REST APIs through the website. And finally, and I think this is very nice, we have a tools execution section in the, in the website that lets you um, try in a very easy way all this collection of endpoints. Um, this part of the website includes four different steps. The first one is the selection of the tool, so the building block, and I will do all the different steps, the four different steps with a particular example, which is finding pockets in a protein using the fPocket uh, software that is very, very famous. So we um, select the Bioxel build, uh, virtual scanning package and we select the fPocket run tool. We know that this is the one that we need. Um, and then we use, uh, we, we put as an input, a JSON file with a configuration file. Now, this is the only, if you maybe complicated the step because you need to know what is inside this JSON, but you have here uh, a link to the fPocket run tool information, which is giving you all the information that you need to produce this JSON file. And if not, you can also download the sample file here and just modify the sample file and use the sample file as an input. So very easy. And then a path to the PDB structure in your own uh, computer. And then a couple of names for the output files. And this is going to do this part of the process of the time. So it's sending the input data, calling the REST API, the job will start and a token ID will be received. But you don't need to do anything about uh, with this token ID because the web server is doing that for you. So this is just an example of a JSON file for this particular uh, uh, building block. In the website is going to do the polling for you. And remember, this is the polling part of the process. So the website is checking the job status and is giving you uh, the information about, okay, uh, we still need to wait because the job is being uh, run in the virtual machines when the job is finished then it will receive the ids of the different amount outputs and the website is going to tell you okay the state is finished and these are the output files and again there's a couple of ids for this uh, or token ids for these output files and the website is uh, automatically um, generating these uh, endpoints to retrieve the output files that are generated by the rest of the bi so all of this can be uh, used can be, can, can be done using the website, the REST API website. So I encourage you to take a look at the website. And this, sorry, this is the final part of the process, which is retrieving the output files from the database. Okay. Apart from that, and of course, I'm interested uh, uh, mostly on workflows. You can also build workflows uh, using this uh, REST API. And this is an example of a Jupyter notebook on, on how to use this programmatic uh, interface. And uh, it's very easy. We have uh, produced uh, a bit of a, a library and a small library for that. That is just launching the job with a particular uh, REST API endpoint with again, the configuration for the, um, for the endpoint, for the building block and the output in this case, which is basically, we are downloading a PDB from the PDB file, checking the job is doing the poll uh, and retrieving the data once this, the job is finished. And then you can visualize the information, this downloaded PDB file uh, in Jupyter Notebook. You can do something a bit more complicated, like the example uh, that I was showing you before about finding pockets in a protein. Uh, and this is the way, and you see it's exactly the same. You generate the properties or the JSON file, the configuration file. Uh, this is the endpoint that you want to run. This is the um, outputs where you want your data to be placed. Uh, you check that you launch a job, you check the job and you retrieve the data. So in all the different building blocks from all the collection of building blocks in the BioXL uh, building blocks library, you can run them like this, in the same syntax for all of them. And remember that this is run in, not in your computer, but in a, in a remote computer. And again, um, if you are interested in workflows as I am, you have examples in the website about how to run an MD setup again to prepare the protein to run a molecular dynamic simulation using the REST API. So everything 
in a remote way. So you can go to the website and take a look at, at these, which basically have all of these different steps um, uh, from fetching the PDB structure, adding, filling, so creating the solvent box, adding the water molecules, the ions, minimizing the system, equilibrating the system, and also running a, a short, free, unrestrained molecular dynamic simulation. The only thing that you need in your machine uh, to run this workflow is basically a Jupyter notebook with Python, of course, and the possibility for the Jupyter notebook to uh, read the Conda environments. And then if you want to see intermediate results, this library is about 2D plots, uh, 3D representation or trajectory representation. But this is the only thing that you need to run this workflow. And the installation process is, um, you can find the installation process in the documentation for the, for the workflow. Okay, enough about the REST API and the programmatic interface. I'm now jumping to the next uh, uh, part of the, of the presentation today, which is the BioBB workflows. And in this case, uh, and as a difference from the previous one, this is a web-based, total, totally web-based graphical uh, access to biomolecular simulation workflows. Now we are focused on workflows and we are focused on the web-based graphical access, not just to the um, possibility to access remotely to the bioxid building blocks, but also to the workflows. Um, like they are still running the provider's infrastructure in our case, in this case, in MMB, in our group, of course, again, with limitations. But as you will see in, in the example that, that I will give you, uh, the workflows can also be downloaded and uh, run locally in your own machine in case that you want to tune the workflow, modify some of the steps or modify the parameters. There's a personal workspace uh, with all the users' projects, and, and I will show you something about that, and this is very important. And again, there's no need of any installation or deployment in your machine um, in case you want to run them in the website and not uh, locally. There's also the possibility to connect the web server to external clusters. I will tell you something about this in the last slide of the presentation. Okay, so implementation of this web server is a bit more complicated than the REST API before, but the idea is more or less the same. Actually, the first part of the implementation is, is uh, shared with the REST API. That means that we have a database with all the information. We have the private infrastructure in our, in our own premises uh, with all the installation already uh, there, all the bioxal bio building blocks there. And then we have a uh, a typical file system, this is where the trajectories are uh, written, and then the trajectories can be streamed directly to the user using this fantastic MDSERF uh, technology that if you are not familiar with it, just take a look at the publication in NAR uh, last year, because I think it's fantastic. It's, it's basically streaming all the information from the trajectories to the user uh, through web site. Um, if you remember the collection of uh, transversal workflows that I was telling you before uh, from the bioxal building blocks, there is also a possibility to run, to launch this uh, collection, these, these workflows using these bioxal workflows uh, a website. All the collection or most of the uh, demonstration workflows that we have for the bioxal building blocks are integrated in the bioxal workflows in this tool that I'm going to present you now. So basically, setup of a protein or a DNA or, or a protein with ligand using Gamber, using Gromax, with the possibility to mutate a residue or more than one, uh, parameterize a ligand, run a docking with a protein and a ligand, analyze the trajectories from MD simulation, and also a bit of a DNA um, analysis, DNA-specific analysis. All of, that, all of these workflows are integrated in the, in the BioExcel workflows website. Uh, how to use this? It's very easy, uh, I would say easier than the REST API in this case. You can connect to a web server uh, and start from either from workflows part or from a creation of the project. If you start from a workflows, you can just select which of the workflows integrated in the website is the one that you are interested in. If you want to create a project from uh, a structure, you can go here from structure. If you have a sequence and you want to model the DNA or RNA structure from a sequence, you can start from here. If you want to analyze a trajectory, if you want to run a docking or you want to parameterize a small molecule, you can start from here. The reason that we have divided this is because, as you can see, the input is completely different. So the website is 
customized to this type of input. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. Um, starting from a structure, for example, those are the different steps in the website. Uh, starting with the, uh, the provision of a particular structure, you can upload the PDB file from your own computer, you can use a PDB ID, you can go to the AlphaFold database, you can even browse for whatever you want in the PDB uh, uh, database. In this case, I'm looking for Pyrovat Kinase, for example, and if you uh, go here, uh, sorry, here I'm just highlighting you that there's some different workflows that you can select for this particular input. So for this particular structure, you can select to set up an MD simulation with Gromax, to set up an, an MD simulation with uh, a protein and a ligand with Gromax, the same with Amber, and also with Gromax and mutations. So again, if you go to the pyruvate kinase and you click on search, you will find, and as you can see, it's very graphical uh, table with all the different pyruvate kinase uh, from the PDB, and then you can click. You can also take a look at the uh, structure here, but you can click on one of the PDB and use this one as a structure to start the, the workflow, the execution of the workflow. But before starting the execution of the workflow, uh, we have different sub steps uh, inside the web server. The second one is check the structure here, which I think is a very important process um, for a molecular dynamic simulation that most of the times we forget about that and I think is very important. So for example, this um, section of the website is giving you information about, okay, you have some heteroatoms here, take a look at them. Those are the, so to take a look and see and uh, think if they are important for your simulation or not. Um, incorrect amide assignments, like for example, these two nitrogen atoms here that are very uh, close to each other, but basically it's just a, a, a way that you need to, to solve this problem. You just need to swap this uh, nitrogen and this oxygen because sometimes when you uh, solve the structure by crystallography, you have this problem that you cannot identify if this is a nitrogen or this is an oxygen. This kind of things happens in every PDB, so it's good to take a look at it. And also backbone breaks, for example, and as you can see here, there's a big uh, backbone break that can modify completely the flexibility and dynamics of uh, your simulation if you start with this structure. So I think that this step is very important and uh, the web server is uh, giving you all the important information that you need to before launching the simulation or the preparation of the simulation. Next step um, is to uh, modify the settings of the workflow. Settings are reduced in this case. Uh, you have not all the different uh, settings that you can modify or parameters that you can modify. We, we, we have done this on purpose because uh, it can be a little bit complicated if you have all the different parameters here. And I will tell you uh, the way to solve that. Here you can change the workflow. So when you are at this step, you need to change, you need to think about what is the workflow that I want to use. Um, you have all the information about all different steps of the workflow. Uh, this is exactly the same that I was showing you before with 14 different steps, uh, you know, generating the, the downloading, no downloading, using the structure that you have, do, you have used as an input, creating the topology, solvent box, ions, minimization, equilibration, etc. You have this information for all the workflows, of course, and then you can also modify uh, the parameters and the final MD configuration files. That means that basically the data, the, the web server uh, is able to generate for you the configuration file for a long MD simulation that you can then download and use in your own infrastructure to run. In this case, for example, I think that was a 10 nanosecond simulation in, in your own machine. So the setup is going to be running the server. The last, the final MD simulation, you have all the configuration files that you need to run them in your own machine. Um, this part is important because in the third step, there is also a, a kind of a summary, uh, which is, if you want a provenance of all the of all the project, the name, uh, the the input structure, all the modifications that you've done in the checking, all the parameters that you've written or modified in the previous step, and here is where you can also download the workflows to run them at home. And there's information two different flavors: Python, pure Python workflow, CWL, Common Workflow Language workflow, uh, two different ways. Very easy to reproduce. All the information is there to generate the conda environment with all the dependencies. Remember that these are BioXL building blocks so you can build an environment to run the workflow in your own machine. 
And also you can just see WL that is using Docker containers. And in this case, you don't even have to bother about uh, uh, an environment. The Docker containers will be downloaded. The only thing that you need is a Docker engine, of course, installed in your machine. So you can tune the workflows if you want, downloading them and running in your own machine. If you don't want to run them in your own machine, you want to use the server, then you click on next and the workflow will be queued in our system, in our queue system, in our private cloud infrastructure and will be run. And you have all the steps of the different um, workflows. And finally, you will uh, receive the final um, page with the, basically the analysis results, which are the ones that you are interested in. The analysis results, again, are customized depending on the workflow. So he, this is uh, the analysis of a, a MD setup workflow with the initial structure, with the final structure. This is the unrestrained, the trajectory for the unrestrained uh, uh, MD, last step of the workflow. And here, energies, radius of gyration, and RMSD during this unrestrained simulation, the last step, 500 picoseconds. But if you think about um, protein ligand docking, you have different outputs like this one where you can select the different poses. Here is auto dock different poses, and you can see the pose of the ligand inside the pocket of the protein. This is an, an analysis of an MD trajectory, and this is an analysis of a DNA specific MD trajectory with, uh, in this case, the slight helical parameters and the correlation for different base pairs. So each one of the workflows have different um, customized output results. And all of these, you can find information in the help page of the web server. Now, if you go to the FAQ of the web server, there is one question that is very important, and is that it's strictly necessary to be registered in the BioV workflows. You can register, as you can see here, and have a user account. And I strongly recommend you to do that if you want to try the web server. Why? Because it's very easy. There's nothing else than this, just entering the name and the email and your institution. And then when you go to the project actions of the results of a workflow, instead of having just downloading the results, you have all of these different options, which are rerun the project, clone the project, make the project persistent so that it not disappears after one month, and also make the project public. So in case you want to share all the project, the URL can be exported and uh, give them to a, a colleague uh, and give all of this information available for them, which and at the same time, they can also take this and rerun a project or clone the project in their own user account. So very interesting options. This is the user um, workspace with all the different projects that the user has uh, run with all the different actions that you can do this five gigabytes for each user. And if you click on the user profile, you can see here the, the different profile. You can modify all the different uh, information that you have uh, used to generate your user. But this here, it, it will give me uh, the opportunity to talk about these SSH keys, which is the last slide for this project, which basically is here because we also give the possibility through this SSH key to connect to remote HPC clusters. And we have tested that with different supercomputers in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and also in CSC, in Puchti machine. So this is the computer, this is the user, your, of course, your account. Um, this is a folder in the, in the supercomputing machine. And this is an SSH key that is generated automatically by the server when you click on this button. And the check is checking if the server has connection using the user and the SSH key to the computer. And then once, once it has connection, you can run molecular dynamic simulation, long molecular dynamic simulations using this connection. And then the files will be sent to the HPC, uh, the Slurm or whatever uh, job will be launched there and the output will be retrieved. And all of these also thanks to another module of the Biosol Building Blocks, which is called BioBB Remote. Okay, so I'm going to uh, finish the presentation with some conclusions because I think it's time. Uh, as a summary, we, I have presented in a very a quick way a couple of projects from the Bioxyl Building Blocks uh, ecosystem. The first one is the collection of, pro of REST API endpoints that give us uh, remote and programmatic access to all the different building blocks integrated in the Bioxyl Building Blocks library with no need of uh, installation and running in the provider's infrastructure. And on the other hand, I have presented the graphical, uh, the web-based a graphical interface to access this set collection of uh, demonstration biomolecular, biomolecular simulation workflows that are 
again, running the provider's infrastructure, but it also gives you the possibility to download them and run them locally with a personal workspace with all the users projects that can then be shared to your colleagues, no need of installation and connection, possibility to connect to external clusters. Um, let me finish please with acknowledgement acknowledgements to the people that basically uh, run all the work, which is Janice, our full stack developer, uh, Modesto, Professor Modesto Orozco is the, the PI uh, of the group. Uh, and in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, we have uh, the help of uh, Prof Professor Josep Buzelby and also Pau Andrew, which is the main developer of the Biaxel building blocks. And finally, we have time now for questions or suggestions. Uh, here you have the two uh, publication for the two different projects. Please take a look uh, if you are interested. Uh, and I have put here uh, a bit of uh, uh, questions for you to start thinking about that. Uh, it can be now or it can be after the presentation, after the webinar, if you will, uh, if you are interested in playing a bit with the servers or uh, reading the, uh, the papers, please then contact me uh, and uh, give me our, uh, your, your feedback, sorry, about uh, what functionality or workflow would you like to see integrated in these tools. This is important because in BioXL, we care about our users, so we will take a look at this uh, uh, feedback and we will try to integrate if possible uh, what you think is important for you. Uh, I would consider using them these, uh, these tools only if something needs to be changed, something that you can think, please tell us and uh, find them useful or not useful because please tell us the reasons. Uh, so thanks for being here uh, and, uh, and now it's time for questions. Thank you very much, Adam. Yeah. So while people are starting to type a question, so we got uh, a question from Patricia. She asked the question that I have is how the workflow helps trainees to become better simulators users. Trainees? Okay. Uh... I think that uh, for the trainees, it, it makes you aware, and this happened to me all the time, that uh, first you need to, you know, it, it's, maybe it's not in the workflow part, but it's in the checking part that I was showing you in the BioVB workflows web server, that when you start the simulation, you need to, uh, you know, take a bit of time to take a look at the structure and identify possible problems. I mean, backbone breaks that I was showing you, something related to the, the important ligands, uh, important uh, protonation states of different residues. This thing is very, very important. And it, it's not even in the workflow by itself, but it's, it's before the workflow. And you need to be very aware of all these possible problems because if you start with something that is not correct, then the, as I was telling you during the presentation, you will end up having a dynamics or a flexibility results that are completely wrong. So uh, sometimes uh, for the trainers also, uh, we need to be aware of that. And when we start working with these automating processes and we start running 100 different MD simulations at the same time with 100 different structures, we need to be aware of that. This is one of the points. I, I can think about more points, but I, I think that uh, uh, maybe we can discuss different questions. Today. Yeah, but maybe it's also good for uh, building tutorial. What do you mean? What do you think about Adam? Of course, of course. So, so the, the demonstration workflows, uh, I, I didn't have time to enter into that uh, in detail. But for the demonstration workflows that we have in the in the in the Bioxel building blocks website, but also in the workflows website, in in both of them, uh, they are transversal workflows. That means that are workflows that we are using in everyday, uh, in our everyday life. So the, the preparation of the setup, something like this, and we then can use these transversal workflows to uh, in our training events. And actually, in BioXL, we have been using these workflows since I think it's been like four years that we are using these workflows. And of course, we are. Uh, developing more of these kind of workflows. I think that they are very uh, interesting, and in particular, the Jupyter Notebooks one. Uh, because there you have all the intermediate results and you can inspect the intermediate results. And if something is not really as you wanted, you can go back one cell. I hope that you're familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, modify the parameters of this cell and then run it again and take a look at the, uh, at the intermediate result and go that, that way until you find the full workflow with all the parameters that you are interested in. So yes, absolutely. 
so while people are thinking and maybe are typing a new question, because uh, please use the QA function to type your question. In the meantime, I have another I have a I may have I have another question for Adam. Uh, what do you think is the higher barrier or better? What people need as a background to start to use the building blocks? The, the API or the workflow that you show it. I would recommend to start with the uh, IBB workflows. Uh, so the last project, the last tool that I have presented today, because basically it's a graphical user interface and it's very easy to use. You start with the PD code, for example, and try to run this MD setup workflow from a structure. And then once you have run that and uh, look at the different steps and identify what the different steps are doing, then you can jump to the, if you are interested, you can jump to the Bioxo Building Blocks website, the main one, where we explain all the building blocks and the library, and look at one of these demonstration workflows, which are Jupyter Notebooks. And each of the different cells of the notebooks uh, is a different building block, so a different step of the workflow, and it contains information about what this step is doing. So uh, let's see, the, the BioXL workflows uh, website is giving you a kind of a black box with the, the whole workflow, and you can run the whole workflow. Then if you want to start thinking about what are the different steps of the workflow, and what are they doing, how can I modify this, you can jump to the Jupyter notebook and then modify these parameters. And then we can go on and on, and we can end up doing uh, massive things in HPC machines, but there's no time for that for today. But do you think people need a base of Python, a base of uh, Jupyter Notebook, no tool, how to use Jupyter Notebook, you, Linux shell, what do you think is the minimum? I don't or think nothing. they need much because if you uh, if you open a the notebook, one of these demonstration workflows, and you can just run one click to in in the run button to each of the cells, you can directly identify how to modify the parameters because it's very easy. You have them. You, you don't even need to know a lot of Python. You just identify where are the parameters and just modify them. So. Yes, if you know Python or you are familiar with Jupyter Notebook, that is, uh, it would be easier for you. But I, it, for me, it's not a limiting step. Okay, thank you. Please do that in this. If you can, if you want to ask question, also you can ask whatever. You can ask also what are the future idea that where in which direction they will go this workflow. You can ask whatever you want. In the meantime, people are thinking, I just scroll through some announcement so people can type while I make some announcement. So uh, BioXL has different activities. So here, so I want to go through a little, this is the new webinar that we will run in June. So we will have a, a webinar on a virtual research environment for integrate modeling of biomolecular complex with uh, the new modular version of ad hoc that will be given by Alexander Bonven from the University of Utrecht. And this will be the 30th of June. And then one week after, we will have another webinar on another soft, um, course software of BioXL, this PMX. And uh, that is uh, Gromax PMX for an accurate estimation of free energy difference. And then uh, it will be given for, for from uh, or by Sudramasha Bea from the Max Planck Institute of Göttingen. Then we all, we have also summer school where all you will learn how to use the building blocks. Also Gromax and PMX, they are also topic of this school and this will be in Sardinia from the 10th and the 15th of September. So, you can still register, so please go to the website of the BioXL if you are interested. And finally, BioXL is running for all the three code. So the four uh, software cores, so that means Chromax, PMX, uh, the building, so the library, the building blocks library, and uh, ad hoc, that we will run a survey that we will use to build uh, um, to build our plan for the future. And then we want to understand, like Adam was mentioned, the direction that those software has to go to fulfill user need. So now if you go to here, 
One of the survey that is already online is the Gromer survey. So I will, if people are using Gromer, so please also, if you're not using and you want to give your feedback, please go there and make the survey. And soon we will come, we will have also the survey for BioBB building blocks for PMX for ADOC. And probably Adam will post the link to the survey in the forum that as I was calling is called ask.bioxcel.eu. So you are all welcome to go there to ask a question to Adam also after the webinar. So please go ahead with some other question. Just type it in the Q&A panel if you want. Uh, Patricia, did uh, Adam answer correctly to your question? Or did you have something, some other reflection? Yeah, Patricia say thanks. Okay. So, if no other questions are coming, I thank you all. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. Thank you very much, Adam, for giving this webinar. And uh, please go and try to use the BioBB building blocks. If you make mistake, it's not a problem. You can just ask Adam and uh, and others. So just it doesn't happen. Nothing. I think you don't broke anything. Okay. Thank you for attending. Bye bye.